Hi, my name is Alfredo Deza and we are going to talk today about Gripe. It's a vulnerability scanning tool that is uh, pretty useful and it's one of the tools that I've been working on for a few months. It is uh, pretty good, pretty fast and um, let's try and see how this works, why it's useful and why you want to, why, why would you want to install it and, and run it against your uh, projects. So I'm here uh, on GitHub, the the address for the project is uh, github.com slash anchor slash gripe. And I'll go through the process of installing and seeing how this works. So let me just scroll down a little bit here. It's a bunch of files. It's a Go project, so you have binaries uh, all over the place. Um, so not all over the place, but all, for a bunch of different systems, which is uh, pretty useful. So um, here you have like a, the readme is pretty complete, but let's just scroll down. Uh, I'll skip the features for now. Let's scroll down to getting started uh, or actually just getting installed. There we go. Installation. Um, I'm running OS 10, so I am going to go ahead and use uh, Homebrew. But if you're using some of the other uh, instructions, then that, that would also work fine. So let me go to my terminal. I don't have Gripe installed, so I'm going to have to go and install it. So I'm going to head back to the terminal. Uh, here I have like a sample Python application, has a Docker file, some requirements that text. We'll, we'll get into that in a second to see how Gripe is relevant in this situation. So um, if I do which Gripe, I don't have Gripe installed. The instructions mentioned that I should, uh, that I, I can use brew and um, it's always good to do brew update. In my case, I just did that before um, before starting, so it, uh, it shouldn't take that long. There you go. It it just took like a couple of seconds there. Uh, that, that might take a few minutes if you're just trying out Brew Update if you haven't done this uh, in a while. Uh, Brew is is kind of like a package manager. If you haven't used it before in OS 10, it's it's um it's kind of like a package manager for OS 10. But um, I'm gonna use that. I'm not going to go into details on how to set it up. If you've never used brew, like the other installation methods would, would work fine. So then we need to do brew tab uh, anchor gripe. So that basically tells brew, hey, I have a, a formula here. Brew works with formulas. And it's like, I, there's, a, there's a specific formula here that knows how, how to install gripe and make it available in my system. And now I'm able to brew install gripe. So let me go ahead and do that. And so this uh, pulls in the latest release, which in this case is 0 0.7.0. There is a specific uh, image for my system. And that's it. And now if I do which gripe, it should work. Perfect. So let's do gripe version. Great. So it tells me the version is 0 0.7.0. It was built. Uh, in January, uh, it seems like all all is good. Let's try let's try the help menu. Let's see help. Ooh, there we go. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. Um, you can um, you can you can scan for um, vulnerabilities in a um, for an image, and so it supports the Docker uh, syntax here, which is repository image colon tag. Uh, but uh, you also have the possibility to, to use a Docker tar, OCI tar or directory or, or a file system directory. So, so there, there's a lot of uh, stuff in there, right? Like primarily we'll just concentrate in Docker um, slash um, containers and paths. Um, so far we've not seen anything useful. So let's, let's, try to make, <laughs> let's try to make something useful. So I'm here in this Python app, I'm going to do ls. I have a requirements that text. Let's take a look at how, what that, what's, ooh, Flask, uh, zero that zero that one. So that, that looks pretty old. I think Flask is up to several versions beyond that. Uh, so this is a very old one. So uh, first thing that you can do with Gripe, uh, Gripe accepts a path to a directory uh, for, for uh, scanning vulnerabilities. And we are going to uh, go one directory app, and then we're going to say gripe, their colon, and then we're going to say, what is it, Python app, Python dash app, perfect. 
So right now it's pulling the latest vulnerability database. It's 47 megabytes. Ooh, and look at that. So it, it, it did three things, which is uh, a pretty, pretty crucial. So it, first it checked if there, if there was an update for the vulnerability database. The database gets updated all of the time. Vulnerabilities are reported all the time. So if, if this uh, application wasn't vulnerable this morning, it could certainly be vulnerable by this afternoon. So there's a constant uh, check of uh, updates to the vulnerability database. It pulls that and then it catalogs the image. Well, in this case, we're not catalog cataloging an image. We're cataloging a path. We're cataloging a directory path and it's going in there and trying to find out what would be uh, installed if this was running in a system. So it found that there was a uh, requirements that text file and something something was declared there and he caught that and it's like oh well flask 0.0.1 would be installed and that's problematic so then it um uh then it scans and then it does the the matching so it tells you hey you have installed 0.0.1 but there's a fix and it tells you the vulnerability in this case uh ghsa that's a github security advisory and uh, otherwise it gives you uh cves so there's a couple of CVEs associated with that version and it tells you the severity. So, so, so that's, that's pretty cool, right? Like if I'm, if I'm writing an application, like I might not know that, um, the way gripe is doing this is because it sees that there's a pin dependency. So let's take a look at that Python at the pi requirements that text. Uh, so it sees that, Oh, this is pinned. Like, so if I'm a developer, uh, I think, I think it was 12.3 where it was fixed in. Perfect. Yeah, so that was fixed in 12.3. So if I change that to say 0.12.4, let's change that pretty quickly, 12.4, then um, this application in particular wouldn't be vulnerable again. So I'm gonna run it again, see that there's no update available now with the database because it's all, it already pulled the latest uh, version available. And now my vulnerabilities are less than initially. And again, this is all very fast, right? It just takes it takes a few seconds, looks at the directory and tries to figure out what is going on there. All right, so it seems that 12.4 is still vulnerable. The severity is low. Uh, it's uh, GHSA and this one, this one right here. But uh, this one uh, seems pretty important. This is a high one, like, uh, and doesn't have a fix. So CVEs are useful because then you can look at what type of vulnerability this is. Um, in this case, I believe, let me see, we can go to um, uh, my, here we go, we can say that one. Let's see what happens. This is the CVE. Um, uh, website where you can get more information so uh, information about vulnerabilities and let's see pal projects flask before 1.1 is affected by unexpected memory usage okay impact is denial of service that sounds pretty <laughs> pretty terrible um if you send a crafted encoded json data uh, so fixed version is one and there might be an overlap okay perfect so if we go back to our little project over here um it seems that we can go and uh, make another update to our Python uh, application with its requirements to the Pi. So I'm gonna set it to it's like, I want this to be installed here. Let's run gripe again. Perfect, it, it doesn't find anything now because I've set it to 1.0.0, uh, then the vulnerability uh, is, is like my application is seemingly safe. Nothing is being pulled in. So that's perfect. I have a perfect little Python project with a requirements that text file. It doesn't find anything. That's pretty cool. However, if I go in here, there is a Docker file. So the Docker file is using the Python 3.8. It's copying the requirements and then it sets a, a work directory to web app. It installs the requirements, so it would install Flask, and then it would just run uh, the Flask application. Uh, that's fine. Let's take a look at Web App. And let's, let's see, Web App, I think there's a single file in there. Yeah, that's right. So Web App has a couple of uh, Flask routes. This is a tiny, tiny um, uh, Flask application that will run on port, I think it's 8080, the, the default port, or 8000, the default port for Flask and it has some a couple of uh, sample routes. 
So let's, uh, how about we build these? How about we build this container? Because Gripe uh, can also scan containers. And so we're gonna do docker build-t. We can say, we can say Alfredo Deza, which is my username. And then we'll say um, uh, flask app. And uh, here, I think that should do it. Let's see. All right, so my container is building. It's a bunch of stuff uh, being downloaded. Uh, nice. Um, okay, so it, it it created this Alfredo Lisa slash Flask app container. So the thing that Gripe can do is it can scan containers. And the way we do that, we can say Gripe and then pass the, the tagged container uh, so in, in in my case, I use Alfredo Lisa slash Flask app. So let's let's take a look at that. Let's do Alfredo Lisa slash Flask app and see what happens. So no update available. And now it's loading the image. So it's requesting the image from Docker. So it's going to the Docker daemon and pulling, trying to pull that image down, uh, copying it locally. And so it will do it will, it will do some inspection inside the image. As you know, images can contain many layers and these layers are uh, compressed. And so behind the scenes, Gripe is bringing down this whole image, uh, finding all the layers and trying to decompose each layer and try to find vulnerabilities in each of those layers. In this case, it's taking a little bit uh, longer because it is trying to pull this um, image, which it seems like it's a pretty, pretty heavy. Like the progress bar is there is, is, is moving. So this is not necessarily uh, gripes doing. It's that the image happens to be, you know, pretty, pretty big. I can see now I'm looking at my network monitor download, download, downloading <laughs> several megabytes of data from the Docker daemon. All right. So it's almost done. It loaded the image. It's parsing the image. So that goes pretty quickly. Now it's cataloging everything that in, it finds in there. And it's like, we have a boatload of stuff. Why is this important? And why is, why is happening? Like I just deployed my, requir my requirements that text and my little flask app, which is, which was not vulnerable. Look at, look at this. This is just uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty substantial. So what's, what's going on? L let me scroll back all the way up Let me scroll all the way to the beginning so that we can we can see what what is the deal here. Uh, oops, uh, there we go. I, I scroll way past it. Okay, so um, it scanned the image, cataloged the image, and it found this is this is pretty important. When it cataloged the image, it found four hundred and forty-two packages. Wow, that that's substantial. Uh, if sometimes developers are thinking, well, I, I'm I'm just installing this Flask app. Uh, what's the deal? Well you have a, a base container image. And in this case is the Python 3.8 image. And that has other packages that has system packages installed in it. This is apparently a Debian based uh, distro. So you can see apt is in there. And um, it does behind the scenes, Gripe is analyzing and finding these vulnerabilities. So now we have 1600 vulnerabilities and you didn't install apt that came with the container image. So gripe is detecting what version is installed and, uh, in, and if it matches any vulnerability and it does, and you can see here, there's a bunch of negligible ones. Negligible is basically meaning like, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's little risk that that might uh, cause a, uh, a security concern. So we can, we can keep going and you can see there's a bunch of stuff being utils. Um, and now we're going into some that are critical, right? So you, you see click here is seven that one that two, that, that seems uh, pretty, pretty, uh, serious. And so a lot of these things are out of your control because you're installing a little Python app with one dependency and you have, you have to deal with these. So, now it's up to you to decide how to mitigate this or perhaps use a different base image and, and to deploy your application and see if any of these negligible ones are worth taking a look at, as well as looking at the critical ones 
perhaps this vulnerability is not as critical in the type of environment that is going to be deployed. So that's, that's what happens. So this is Gripe. That's how you install it, how you run it. Uh, we've installed Gripe version, um, Gripe version 0.7.0, which was uh, released uh, in January 2021. Pretty easy to install, very fast, and it gives you a really good picture of not only directories and paths, but also any, any and all images that might be out there in the wild, including the ones that you just built.